Imagine having Cormac McCarthy as your editor. That would be mind-blowing and traumatizing all at the same time. And we are about to watch a clip where Cormac talks about his process of editing the books of some of the greatest scientific minds in the world. And then after the clip, we are going to have a discussion on Cormac McCarthy's approach to editing and punctuation because all of us in here right now are fans of Cormac and think that he is a genius. But how many of us out there actually walk the walk and write and follow some of the same stylistic and punctuation rules that Cormac is always talking about. I'm guessing almost none of you, myself included everybody, because to write like Cormac is very hard. So if you guys don't know, I am trying to make Write Conscious the open source headquarters of Cormac McCarthy related material. We will be doing chapter by chapter breakdowns of his books, going over the thousands of different perspectives to his works, having interviews with the top Cormac McCarthy scholars in the world, and a bunch of other fun stuff. Live streams, I'm planning some more soon. So subscribe if you're interested. I also have a Cormac McCarthy newsletter down below. And let's hop into the clip. So you had a very, very famous editor, uh, Albert Erskine, yeah. who was the editor of writers whom I know you very much admire, Faulkner and Lowry, real writers. Yeah. And in yeah. time, you've become a kind of editor. <laughs> and, um, yeah. and so Did you guys see that arm cross by Cormac? Every single time, David Krakauer gets a little bit too close to talking about Cormac McCarthy's approach to writing or his books. He folds his arm, you know, that's the classic sign and that's one of them, it's just really funny. So what makes this clip hilarious is McCarthy was a major rebel because in McCarthy's time, everyone learned and was smart enough to use semicolons. They were not just a big deal in academia or the literature world, but students and the population at large used semicolons. And now I am existing in this post-apocalyptic era where when some of my high school English students put a couple periods in one of their essays, I feel like jumping up and down, like I want to go sprint laps around the school. It's the greatest underdog comeback story of all time. But all jokes aside, McCarthy's philosophy of simplifying writing, making it easier, is 100% correct. Because there's nothing worse than reading academic papers or novelists who are just using punctuation as a way to show that they are smart. As Kurt Vonnegut said, semicolons are transvestite hermaphrodites representing absolutely nothing. All they do is show you've been to college. And it's really weird when like I see a writer, I know someone personally, and they start getting the semicolon itch or some grammatical itch and they just start doing it everywhere. And it's so annoying because there are over 10, if not 15 other things that you can do than add a semicolon. You know, all the coordinating conjunctions, obviously a period, a comma, and all the different solutions add up to over 15. And it's really actually a great pairing that McCarthy who writes so simply would be working with scientists because we have these scientists and I'm sure there's this self-esteem issue, right? You're a scientist, you're trying to put this book out there and it depends on if you are, you know, trying to write a paper for, you know, academia or if you're maybe writing a pop physics or, or more of a layman book that you want to be a good writer. You want to get and get the respect as a good writer because people feel like that's important. So something that you can do in their heads is to just, you know, show everyone how smart you are with your punctuation when that's actually a way to muddle your work. Because as we see with McCarthy, the non-use of quotation marks is not that big of a deal. I've only a couple times across what, nine or 10 Cormac McCarthy novels, have I ever wondered, who, who is talking here? Then if I look up the page a little bit, it's really fast and I'm back on track, I can figure it out. And McCarthy is able to do this because as we have been talking about on this channel, McCarthy edits his books for years and years and once you comb over lines and focus on sentence structure, you can figure out ways to start eliminating commas or personal pronouns, adverbs, and other things that start to muddle the work. When you actually read McCarthy's prose, it is very active, very advanced with its syntax, contrast, sound, but very simple all at the same time. And to create that level of layering obviously requires skills, but it also requires the time to figure out how to write these types of sentences. And to do this requires this great unlearning on our part, and I am trying to do it, and I would like to know your thoughts on if you've ever tried to reduce some of your punctuation use and what your journey with punctuation has been. Because another trend I've noticed is that writers struggle with longer sentences. And that's what another part, a place where McCarthy shines. He might, you know, make one of these huge multi-line sentences, only have a couple commas within it. But I have really never been able to do that very well. So a great solution is to just go back, to stick with short sentences that don't require as much thought. Because what are you trying to focus on? What, what matters here is delivering a message to the reader. If it's nonfiction, then really just delivering the message. Or if it's fiction or poetry, then making it as beautiful as possible. On another interesting note, it's interesting that Cormac is, you know, helping people edit the work. And a lot of writers
Carter's actually participating in this. I just made a video on Haruki Mirakami, and he loves to, you know, take time to work on translations as he was working on novels because that's just something else that's literary that he can do with their time. And there are so many great authors out there that speak about translations, but I think editing and putting together journals is something else that's very important. And of course, McCarthy is doing it in his own way with scientific papers. But as we saw in The Passenger, the, the few sections where we got some writing on very scientific stuff, they had a lot of clarity. I, I feel like maybe they went a little bit too long, but they were very clear. And you could tell that they were written by someone who felt it and was and so tomorrow I'm actually going to do a major breakdown of Cormac McCarthy's advice on how to write a scientific paper and we are going to be contrasting that with his Kukuli problem paper and I'll be showing you guys how he actually is implementing the techniques that he talks about in action so let me guys let me know what you guys thought about this video about semicolons and Cormac McCarthy's approach to editing to writing in general and we will have a lot more videos on punctuation McCarthy's writing style and that video dropping tomorrow peace